Let's see what this sounds like real quick. I like that. Your voice really sounds good. Thank you. I feel like like quiet storm. Like <laughs> Got you. It's a whole vibe, man. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? It's your boy LaCheston, man, checking in for the after hour session. It's our first after hour session, it man. Is. And uh, I'm not going to jack up her name because I've been jacking it up all day. You know, we just got done, uh, you know, talking a little bit with the homie yeah. and the homegirl, the host, the MUA, my co-host, Kim. And she told me, number one, do not bring that girl in here messing up her name. Thank you. So uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to let her introduce herself real quick. What is up, y'all? My name is Ty. Um, not Tia, not Tay, but Ty. Um, I am also known as the Pierce Poet. Um, you can find me on Instagram at T-A-I underscore P-R-U-I-T-T. That's what it is, man. So here in the after hour sessions, man, we pretty much just get to the nitty gritty of whatever the hell we want to talk about. It's just, just just keeping it in the buck, man. I mean, it may be relationships, it may be sex, it may be sexuality, Ooh. pansexual, uh, whatever, man. So, you know, she's here because we work together. Yep. Uh, uh, she she came and did a collaboration with myself and Kim. That was dope. Uh, and everybody's waiting on images because they're waiting on me. They're my hard. fault. But uh, we've just been trying to get the podcast and everything off the ground. Uh, so, But tonight, man, we're just going to sit back. We're going to kick it. We hope you enjoy the ambiance uh, that we try to create. And uh, I'm going to talk with her a little bit, man. And we're going to talk poetry. We're going to talk vibes. And, and then we're going to let it go from there, man. So yes, man, if you're here, you here. Go ahead and sit back, relax, man. And we're going to make it happen, man. So, Period. First and foremost, man, thanks for coming. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, you see, you came into a little bit of turmoil. Hey, look, <laughs> it was funny to me. <laughs> it's, it's just, man. It's the chaos. <laughs> it's, been, it's been crazy in here today. Man. Um, we, 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 when I say we, me and Kim, we really appreciate you coming. Like I love y'all, though. We had somebody to flake on us today. They had a reason, though. Oh. But it put Kim in the mood. Mm, I understand that though. And then she took it out of me. Um, you just happen to be there, <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> you just happen to be there, <laughs> so that's okay. Look, bro, listen. Okay, <laughs> as a woman, I know because if somebody in the line of fire, bro, they just go so happen to get hot. Like I don't know <laughs> what y'all be anticipating, but we just like that. Man, look, the thing with me is number one, like I'm a cool, calm, collected person. Like treat me like you always treat me. Like I need the same treatment. <laughs> Throughout what all the little phases y'all go through. Okay, but listen, you just said all the little phases. So how you expect to be treated the same through all the little phases? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I don't care who else you treat bad, treat me the same. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like give me the same consistency. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's different because it depends on like the personalities though. Like you chill, but it's like people were like more dynamic. Like I'm not, I can't do that all the time. Like I'm chill. I feel like I put myself in that category. Right. But like I'm also, like, super extroverted at the same time. So, like, it's levels to me, like, levels. <laughs> okay, so, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a be, I'm gonna be a buck because the After Hours platform is pretty much mine, and it's mine just yeah. because of the sense of, you know, Kyle, what Kim does and how she cares herself, the yeah. organizations that she's attached to, like, she really don't care to be a part of this particular platform. Yeah. This is my platform, so I'm gonna it. do and say what I want to do, you know Period. what I'm saying? So, you were discovered... For me, you yeah. were discovered, you know, months ago, right before my grand opening, I discovered you yeah. on um, on Instagram. Instagram. And I discovered you by the hashtag Alabama Models, because that's what I was searching yeah. to invite models to my grand opening that I was having. Yeah. And uh, from there, I was like, okay, cool. Like, I was just trying to get the room filled yeah. with people, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and, and then uh, I, I don't know what it was, but some was like, okay, look at her a little bit more, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So... Now I'm looking at your TikTok and I'm like, okay, all these different phases and things that we're talking about. Now I'm seeing it because I see a <laughs> different like person and personality and and, and vibe and, and different instances of you in yeah. your social media. So you know, I, I'm gonna just keep it a buck. You know what I'm saying? Like there there are guys like me that are like potentially like just dating or just vibing or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. So. Mm -hmm. When it comes to a, a person of, of, of your stature or a person that kind of sort of like 
is the way that you are. Like yeah. you say, there's like different phases to me. You just got to get to know the different levels. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like what advice can you give like guys, like mm-hmm. when it comes to like dating women like that? Honestly, bro, like I just feel like you kind of have to be really open to being open, if right. that makes sense. Like I, I feel like people like me and I, I can only really speak for me. I'm not going to speak for everybody, but right. I feel like for people like me, like I thrive off of like that human connection, but being like, you know, just having different levels, like there has to be some kind of compromise at the end of the day. I understand like people are not all the same. Right. So I feel like for people like me, like I kind of know how to manage like when to be one way and like when to be another way. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like I'm just going to make somebody uncomfortable about being like too out there and they be right. like, what is wrong with her, bro? Like right. what's going on? But I'm not going to like limit myself to not being myself out in public or like out around anybody, but I just need to understand those levels. So it's just kind of like if you don't want to be around people like me, I don't feel like you should. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want, like, a calmer environment, like, have that calmer environment for yourself. Don't, like, force yourself to be around somebody you don't want to be around right. type stuff. Um, but as far as, like, I don't know, like, extroverted people, bro, like, we really just thrive off of, like, human connection. Like, I thrive off of just, like, being able to be that open and, like, say whatever I want to say. Like, I'm one of those people that I say the first thing that comes to my head, like, whether somebody going to like it or not. Right, right. right. Um, and that way. can be taken, like, that can be taken so far left sometimes. Right. Um, so it really just depends, bro. Like, but just be open and be honest and be, like, able and available for new experiences because you learn so much from people in their different dynamics. And that's kind of, like, a good framework to walk through life, just kind of like embracing people for who they are. Um, Cause that's what love is like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like right. really showing love is like really like accepting somebody like face level. Like I'm accepting you where you at regardless, even if I like you or don't like you, like I can accept you and keep it pushing. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right. So that's with that, with that being said, okay. Like I think like, for me, like, I'm a spontaneous person. Same. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't believe in the traditional dating aspects of things. Okay. Like, it, it's either I'm feeling you or I'm not feeling you. I feel you that. You know what I'm saying? If, like, if I'm feeling you, then yeah. I probably want to spend my time with you whatever time I do got. Yeah. Whatever the case may be, like, it's, it's that's, like, I'm different. Like, I used to tell my mom, like, I date backwards. What do you mean by that? Hold on. <laughs> what do you like, mean by that? Like, the sexual attraction comes first for me. Okay. All right. So once the sexual attraction is there, the sexual attraction makes me want to spend more time with you, get to know you, get to know all the other stuff. Like I, I literally date completely backwards. That's interesting. Do you what do you feel like makes you do that though? There's I feel like a lot of men do that, but they don't admit that they do that. I, <laughs> what, what, what I think is with me is if I see a woman that I'm attracted to, like case in point, like me and Kim talked a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before she actually came into the studio and became part of Little Pig Vision. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told her, like, you know, the amount of models that I had dealt with right. on, on that type of level and stuff like that. And I was like, when it come to me, like, I'm going to just be blind and up front. Like, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the opportunity to make whatever decision that you want to make. As you know you what I'm saying? Like, but it's not, I'm not the, I'm not the fuck boy type neither. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you got some fuck boys that mm. <laughs> just because they can't strike, yeah. that mean they ain't gonna they ain't right. gonna deal with you on yeah. another. Like I'm not like that because at the end of the day, I care about business brand exposure. Period. So if I'm reaching out to you, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm interested. That's one thing. Mm. But if you also got the following and you got you check out the boxes for me doing yeah. a collaboration and working yeah. with you, just because. You got boyfriend, you got this, that, or you're not interested, not going to make me stop right there and not be like, I don't want to, like, Mm -hmm. still work with you. You know what I'm saying? But the the overall thing with me is I try to just be up front. Like, my mom, like, when I was in, when I was in, when I was in high school and I was actually hanging with the crazy ass dude that's in the engineering room right now, like, (laughs) when when we were smoking, like, hella weed, you know what I'm saying, when we was in high school, like, it wasn't nothing like for him to rush for a couple 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Touchdowns, yeah. couple hundred yards. I'm right behind him. We leaving the game. We going to McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? All the girls at McDonald's waiting to see what's up. We trying to see who we finna snatch up, take them to the old. We chilling at the late. We got people that got the bread, got the weed, pulling up like y'all did a good game, man. Here's some money okay. and here's some weed, so we smoking good. And then my mama started hearing about the fact that mm. I was getting high. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then she started seeing me coming in her house high. high you know yeah. what I'm saying? And she was yeah. like, I'm tired of you coming in my house high, eating up all the food. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. then she wow. sat me down one day when she was able to have a conversation with me. Yeah. And she was like, look, this is the thing. I don't want for you to do things and people can come tell me about my child in the streets. Without you, her knowing What first? Exactly. Okay. Whatever you're going to do, tell me. Yeah. And at that point, I, yeah. all, well, I was raised, in the time I was raised, my, I respected my mom. Yeah. You know, it goes without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. But she basically told me, you don't have to lie to me. Whatever you're doing, let me know. That's a real. Okay. So, so when I figured that I ain't had to lie to my mama, I ain't got to lie to no motherfucking else. female. Yeah. Yeah. So either you like it or you love it. I'm not going to force it on you. You're going to accept how I am and how I come or, you, or you're not. Yeah. And that's that's what has me on my blunt stage. And I'm at where yeah. I'll just let, you know, like, hey, I'm interested in you, blah, 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 blah whatever the case may be. Yeah. Because if I'm keeping it a book, like the stage where I'm at in life right now, yeah. like, I don't have the time or really the audacity or even yeah. the want to just be somebody undivided exactly. individual. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if, if my lifestyle mixed with what you want, then that's cool and what it is. Right. But I'll keep it a buck and keep it honest. Like, if I was just finna be like, I finna get in a relationship and do right and do this and do that, mm -hmm. then I'll try to get my ex back because she deserved that been versus see, me trying to get that shit to some new person. Look at that honesty, though. That, see, people don't, some guys cannot do that. Like, I, bro, this is crazy that we're even talking about this. Because, number one, we're going to step back and, like, just acknowledge, like, the relationship that you have with your mom. Like, that in a whole is, like, such a large lesson. I feel like parents should do that with their kids. Right. Like, you have to establish, like, that kind of trust, bro. Because, like, stuff like, there, I hear a lot of situations, basically. And I even feel like sometimes, like, with my mom more specifically, like, than my dad, that it's kind of like that, like, with my dad, he's the same way. Like, just tell me anything. Like, bro, I came home from college, and I had to stay with my dad for, like, a year. Right. After post-grad, like, I didn't have a job yet. We do the boot. And I was, like, sneaking out, like, trying to, like, smile my little blunt. Like, <laughs> don't want him to see it. Lo and behold, my dad was like, bro, you, like, you need some? Like, it's in the gut, <laughs> same. Like, I saw you out there. Like, Hold you know on. what I'm saying? I was just like, dang, like, it's unnecessary that I'm even trying to hide something from him. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like, your parents know. Right. But it's, like, being able to be comfortable enough to, like, say that. Because that's what family is for, period. Right. Like, that should be a family dynamic. Like, I should be able to come to you as myself. And you embrace me for that. Because we blood. Like, we supposed to look out for each other. Right. As a whole, bro. So, like, that's just so important. But for that to, to see that carry on into, like, your life and, like, how you interact with people is so key. Because so many people don't have that trust. Like, so many people walk around with trust issues and mm -hmm. all this stuff because they don't feel like they can tell nobody nothing. Like, everybody's going to walk around with their secrets, granted. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. But people don't feel like they can trust nobody. Like, I don't feel like I can tell you this. Or people spread out, like, who they tell what to. And it's like, dang, like, the whole point of being here, bro, like, communication is, is here for a reason, bro. Like, right, right. we're able to communicate with each other. Because we're supposed to communicate with each other. Like, we're supposed to be open with each other. Gotcha. And that, like, ruins relationship dynamics, bro. Like, it, it really kills me to see men, especially, because that's just my experience. Um, but just feel like they have to say one thing to, like, get you. Mm -hmm. But it's not the truth. Like, just spit your truth, bro. If you want to if you wanna hit me, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, like, all you're really trying to do is whatever, whoop de whoop you mm -hmm. want to... Boom, boom, you trying to be an F buddy, you trying to whatever, like, that's cool, but, like, at least give somebody the option to say, like, yes or no. Yeah, like, yeah, and, and like. See, and, and see, it, 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 that's, that, for real, that's how I am. At the end of the day, a woman, she is or she ain't. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was taught at the, at the age of 18, approaching, what, a 36-year-old woman in a yeah. mall that didn't look like she was 36 in San Bernardino, California. Mm. And she was the one who told me, like, a woman knows within 60 seconds of meeting you if she would sleep with you. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, it's yeah. just about how you carry yourself and what you want to do. You know right. what I'm saying? So, 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 so yeah, you, you, that's, that's the nail on the head is yeah. I'm going to be the person that 
I'm going to keep it all the way a buck. And either you is or you ain't. At the end of the day, I would probably like it if you do, but right. I don't really give a damn if right. you don't. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, it's just not really worth the level of energy and all that extra shit that but it's it like takes. There's so many people in the world, bro. Like you lost one fish, it's like a billion other you can. I don't know, like. but the fish that I choose though, I don't like to lose. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if I if I choose, I don't like to lose. Like fuck that. Like okay, that competitive. Like yeah, like like, you, like cause I'm 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 just saying. Like I used to go to, to the club with my homeboy. Yeah. We used to go when I first moved to Birmingham. We used to go inside the Platinum. Mm. I never went to the Platinum with him and never seen him not leave with somebody. Hey. Every every tasty Tuesday okay, that we cool. went inside of the the P.O.B., yeah. he left with somebody. Yeah. Never not left with somebody. Yeah. And I would be in there, and I'd be like his wingman, and yeah. I'm leaving out every night without somebody. Nobody, yeah. And it was different. And, yeah. and the difference was this. He would work the room until he found a kill. Yeah. Me? I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to work the room, but I'm going to work the room with my eyes. Right. So when my eyes lock eyes with somebody that I may be interested in, then I feel comfortable enough to approach you and have a conversation mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then when I had that conversation with you, when I feel within me that I've chose you, yeah. I need for you to choose me back. Because wow. out of all the motherfuckers that I could have chose to talk to, I chose to talk to you. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You're giving me your attention. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I need you to give me, to reciprocate what I'm pushing out back to you. You know what I'm saying? Like Because I'm not, like I hate rejection. Any man, any man hates rejection, right? You know what I'm That's saying? So it, it's kind of sort of like, I don't approach the prey yeah. without knowing that I have a kill. But, like, do you always have a kill? Hell no. <laughs> okay. I ain't need to fucking sit and fucking lie about that. But it's like, why even, like, keep... That's a good mindset to have because it's always good to be competitive. I feel like that kind of, like, keeps you on your toes when you're trying to get somebody. But it's right. like, why not just accept the fact that, like, if you take a hill, you just take a hill, bro. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 so, so I'm going to say that I, 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 I do not say that I've always been had a completion or I've always killed everything that I've approached. But you only but like that, to but, 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 that per, but that percentage is like probably about 95, 96. Okay, I feel like it. Like, I will literally, I won't, I'll go out. Yeah. I won't talk to a woman in the club, in the lounge, anywhere, unless I feel like she's interested in me. Like, Period. A woman eyes will tell you everything. You they know will. what I'm saying? Like I can tell if you feeling me or you want me to approach you yeah. by the way that I'm looking at you. Yeah, and that's no, not I, always I the case. You know what I'm saying yeah. too? Because I bumped into some women that I just had had casual conversation right. and we just struck it off. Yeah. But I just hate losing. So unless I can tell you want me and you've chosen me, nine times out of ten I probably won't even really? approach you. Nope. Really? I prob- nope. I but won't. it's like, I thought, I like, won't. the chase was fun. Like, I thought y'all liked that. Though. The chase fun when you're 18. <laughs> the chase is fun when you're 18. And I you can still jack like off, it. like, five times Ooh. a day. You know what I'm saying? I and mean, still yeah. go do what you're going to do. Yeah, but true. when you get my age, like, the chase ain't, you no, know, like. <laughs> ain't got that, the energy to go that, home that, Yeah, that shit changed, bro. Like, ain't, ain't nobody on that no more. Yeah. Like, like even, even the people that I deal with, it, on the level that I deal with now, like, yeah, it, it, yeah, it yeah. is what it is, like. We do what we do, whatever the case may be. But I, I used to tell, I think I told Kim this a little while ago. I said, the, the thing that's crazy about life and my lifestyle yeah. is I was raised, right? There's this guy named Taff Barton. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not Taff Barton, but Taff Lark in my hometown. He's actually mm-hmm. my little guy brother. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody called him TJ. Okay. He put something on Facebook like 10 years ago that I'll never forget. It's like anytime I'm doing motivational speaking to poverty, low-income right. kids, yeah. I always say this. Yeah. And he put on Facebook, this is what he said, we grew up wanting to be the wrong things. Mm. Because in Evergreen and Brune, you know what we grew up wanting to be? Yeah. The next big dope boy. Yeah. That's, that's what we wanted to be. Know, yeah. Because the, the, the dope boys had the cars. Yeah. They had the money. Yeah. When they walked in the club, the DJ was shouting out their names. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had all the girls. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. So, that's what we wanted to be growing up yeah. in the town that we grew up in. You know what I'm saying? But also, I grew up in an age and time where also my mom was single dating mom. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm that's, saying? That's a different situation. So, 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 I had to learn about if you're going to date especially the age I'm at now, like right. the majority of women, if I date around my age, they got kids, their kids probably grown yep. or they don't want no more kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I had to understand like the, the, the realm of dating a single, a, a single mom, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. And, and that experience with my mom, that's what helped me to understand that yeah. portion of life. Yeah. But number two, 
I also understood that my mom didn't want to mess with nobody and didn't want to have nothing. Mm. So when I would listen to her and her friends mm. playing spades on Friday nights at the work and all the kids sitting on the kitchen floor, yeah. see, there's some people that don't know about shit like that. Yeah. They don't know about one parent going in the kitchen, cooking some hot dogs, yeah. frying some fries, and then we all sitting on the floor. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? We eating, you know right. what I'm saying, on the floor. And then we all in the same bedroom. Yeah. Some of us sleep on the bed. Some of us sleep on the floor, whatever yeah. the case may be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they always talked about when we had an ear to them was – Somebody who had some, who somebody who right. didn't have no kids, and somebody yeah. who did this and that and the third. Yeah. So as I grew up, that's how I made myself. Right. I made myself so I ain't had no kids out of wedlock. Yeah. I made myself so I ain't broke, busted down, and disgusted. You know what right. I'm saying? Within the last four years of my life, I understood the the use of credit and all the mm-hmm. other things. So it put me in the position that I would like to be to attract the type of women that what I really want. want. Yep. But it don't fucking happen. What? You, what? It don't happen, bro. I'm, I'm hearing all this thinking he's going to be like, yeah, and this changed my life. Are you serious? I'm dead ass, bro. Ask him. When we leave up out of here, ask him. I tell her all the time, bro, like, if you look, we just got through talking about a high-value man, right? Yes. I figured out what makes me not a high-value man because I'm missing one of the check, one of the checks off of the list that, that, that would, quote-unquote, make me a high-value man. What's that check? But at the end of the day, it, it's my network. Okay. My network isn't what it needs to be in order for me to say that I'm a high value man. man. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to some of the women that I would actually like won't want yeah. to like give my time, my efforts, let yeah. them inside my world to understand me, the ones that I feel like I can choose to let do that. Right. Don't be the ones that give me the response like, hey, I just want to let you know that uh, I'm completely celibate right now and I'm dating multiple mm. people. You know what I'm saying? Just to let you know. So you, so you mean you want me to date you, spend money on you, take you to the, all these lavish places, and you ain't giving up no pussy, and you could call me one day and tell me that you're going to date fucking Jeff. Man, get the fuck out of here, bro. See, but that's that's a finesse, bro. Like, that's some crazy shit, I'm not bro. I'm going to lie to you, bro. That's a finesse. like. But I just kind of think the relationship game is a little twisted up right now. Anyway, like... I ain't gonna count to you. It's just a lot of platforms out here telling people a whole bunch of different information. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody is like, I don't feel like everybody is basing their ideas off of what they really think they want. I think they're basing more of their ideas off of what the media says they should want. You know what I'm saying? That's a good point. Because That's to a like, good point. Listen to how you was just talking. Like, you know, you framed yourself around like what you believed, you know, your mom and the women around you in your life said that they wanted in a man. Right. So you were influenced by that. And you were like, well, I'm going to morph myself into that type of man. Right. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. But you see how, like, we're very easily influenced as a whole. Like, we're influenced by the things that are around us. And this thing right here is around us 24-7, bro. Like, right, right. 24-7, 365, somebody got a phone on them, and social media is accessible at any time. Right. So it's like, all this city girl stuff, like, I'm not uh. even, you know what I'm saying? And I hate to even do it because, you know, this is a big discussion, like, but all this city girl stuff and all this, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need me a rich man. Like, I be telling people this all the time, bro. I'm like, every woman in this world cannot have a high-value man. Like, it's not even factual. Like, it's not even, like, statistically possible yeah, that I all mean, of us is going to get that. You know what I'm saying? So it, there has to be some kind of, like, realistic, like, we got to check in, bro. Because it's like, you know, you want your boxes to be checked, but people are human at the end of the day. Somebody is not going to check every single one of your boxes, bro. Right, right, right. Like, you cannot expect somebody to just meet all of your expectations and all your criteria like that, bro. People are human beings. We cannot, you know what I'm saying? We can't just check off all them boxes like that. It's, it's crazy that, so, you know, I know that you're, I think you told me you're 24. 24. And and to be there where you at already, like, it's, it's kind of sort of like, it's, it's kind of crazy. But I'll, I'll say this: I, I've met some 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 young women that their maturity level is actually is crazy. Yeah, you, you you wouldn't think that it is the way that it is. Yeah. But is social media is the death mm. of a lot of people's relationships and the relationships that they try to yeah. try to form. Like a lot of people don't understand. Like it's only like seven to ten percent of men in the world that make six figures. That make six figures. You know what I'm saying? And you can still have a life without making six figures, though. Like, but see, I think people don't understand that. Listen, people ain't really trying to tap into that. Like, my you mom my that. mom raised three kids, yeah. bro, working at fast food. Yeah. And fast food, bro. Like, when I got married, my first marriage, I remember 
when me and my wife at the time had a conversation about finances. Yeah. And I told her how much money I was making at the time. I, I even tell you, it was $40,000. I was mm-hmm. making $40,000 a year at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what my wife told me? What? Hey, put the camera on me, man. My wife told me, oh, that ain't good enough. Can you at least make 50? Wow. Straight up. Straight up. Wow. That was the conversation. She was like, that. she. So, so, so my thing is, I'm thinking about the overall aspect of, of how, like, you know what I'm saying. Hold on, we got, we got, we 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 got, we got a problem. We got, we got, we got, we got an issue. So we 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 gonna take like a little small like intermission, and then we gonna come right back we'll to it, back. y'all. We are gonna come right right to it. Oh, what we got? <laughs> you saw <so> goofy, bro. <laughs> It's just gonna have to be cut. No, you good. I appreciate it. You you straight. You doing what you're supposed to do, bro. Yeah. You doing what you're supposed to do. And we back. All right, good people. So we took a small little break, man. You know what I'm saying? And, we, and, and we're back, man. We had a, a little issue, a little technical difficulty, but we are back in Can't hold us and back going. Um, so you remember what we were talking about? We were talking about relationships. We were talking about um, social media and how it affects just the outlook on just bro. the outlook on this stuff, bro. Like, I, I think that uh, that conversation is going to hurt my feelings, bro. Just how I mean, but it's honest, though, like. I feel like that conversation has to be had. Like I'm one of them people, bro. Like I, I like I used to do it more than I do it now. Um, but I used to be like on my Instagram story, just like asking stuff like that. Cause like I love like discussing like and hearing people's perspectives. Right. I just feel like that's so interesting to me. Like even if I agree or disagree, like just kind of understanding where people heads be at. Like just it so me. so 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 w- with the questions that you've asked on your story on Instagram, you know what I'm saying. And since we on Instagram, I'm going to go ahead and dig a little bit deeper. All right. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a two-part question. So what's the craziest thing that you've got in a response to something that you posted that 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 was like a positive question you were just trying to, like, get some hindsight to? Yeah. And then just, like, the just most derogatory, vulgar nigga that slid into your DM just because you light-skinned and, you know, (laughs) you know, you got a whole, like, little vibe about yourself. Like, like talk to us about the the recklessness of the DM. Man, the DMs are so reckless, bro. <laughs> like, oh my god. Um, honestly, I've really got some interesting like responses, but I be asking stuff like about relationships all the time. I feel like <laughs> more than anything, bro. Men be so ready to jump on the defense, like the defense, bro. Like women usually, we just like come come to bat for each other, bro. But like the guys be like, hell no, nah. like no, nah, bro. I ain't even like that. Like da 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 da. Um, because I really just be asking stuff like you know. Like, what do you feel like you prefer, like, um, in relationships or, like, you know, just, like, little nitpicky things like that. Um, I don't feel like I've gotten anything, like, super negative. I just feel like people's perspectives are just kind of, like, a little out there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially, like, when it comes to, like, sexual questions and, like, dudes be like, bro, like, or just kind of lying, bro. Like, 
<laughs> some niggas eat. I'd be like, do you really like? What is your love language? Like, what do you like look for in a relationship? People and, like, don't even know what love languages they are. They don't know what they are. And niggas be like, physical touch. I'm like, no, you just want your dick touch. Like, <laughs> shut up. Like, you be crying. Like, I don't want to hear none of that. I was just, bro, I got bored the other day and I <laughs> re downloaded. You get bored a lot. Bro, listen, I just be. I just think too much, and I just be. Thinking I pay attention to, to your social media. <laughs> like, like it's just. And I work from home, so I just be at the house. Like I just be like, bro, I'm finna like stir the pot. I don't know. I'm just bored. I'm finna do some shit. But like, bro, I, put, <laughs> I downloaded Hinge the other day. I was just bored. I was like, I'm finna like swipe through Hinge, bro, and just see like who I can you swipe crazy, and talk bro. to. You was crazy, and bro. And it was a dude like, and we was having like a good little conversation for a minute. This was today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is today. This is today. We was having a good little conversation, bro. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, he was like, oh, I'm a Libra. I'm like, I'm a Virgo. You know, you know. Did, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold the fuck up. First off. Don't come at me with Nope. That. Hold the fuck up. The first thing I'm going to say, if if he was in your box talking about some he a Libra, chill bro, out, that out, was the first out, fucking red out, flag, bro. I know, because they be knowing to say that, though. But <laughs> they don't be knowing nothing about astrology. But exactly. Don't, we don't keep don't up with that shit. Though. We don't keep up with that shit, I was bro. Like, oh, my God. I'm like, that's so cool. And so um, he goes, uh, yeah. I was like, I think we might be like a good match. And I won't even say that, like, we finna be together or nothing. Like, I don't know you, like. But I was like, I think we could be a good match, like, because we had a lot in common. We was talking about stuff. He was like, yeah, bro. So, like, I think you just need to go ahead and get my name tatted on you, like, today. I was like. Who said that? The dude? Random dude on my hands. I was like. Oh, hold up. Like, you gone a little too far, bro. Like, you lying. Bro, but like, bro, they be doing that. You know, I got people in, in my, like, requested DMs just talking to themselves. <laughs> like, just, hey, beautiful. Like, you look so good today. Hey, beautiful. I wish you would message me. All right, so, so, <laughs> so in their defense, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is. Oh, God. Y'all women in thirst traps, bro. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like y'all... Or literally asking for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, so so I'm going to keep it a buck. All right. So when you got extended invitation for the collab, yes. I told you it was, you had some nice breasts. Yes. And you had the, the nipple rings. Yeah. And I was I told you the look that I was going for, that yeah. it, would, it would look dope for the it look that true. I was trying yeah. to do. Yeah. All right. I saw some other shit that I don't care to put on the podcast or the platform. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It but it's, bad. It's, it, it was bad. It was just like, like, Okay, cool. Like, uh, okay, cool. So again, now that I'm paying attention to how you're moving and what you're doing, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm looking at the TikToks. I'm like, okay, now she falls into the category with the rest of the girls wearing ah. the, wearing a little bitty tights. She turning to the side, doing a little stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? She got a homegirl jumping in the videos. That's you know, she out here with the skate smooth, look like she moving in slow motion and shit. I'm like, okay, and then everything that I see of you, I see the nipple rings. You're asking for it, but it's a, it's the brand though. What is my what is my <laughs> bro? What is my poetry name, bro? What is it? Pierce Poet. Pierce Poet. I, it's a part of brand, bro. You know, if when I first got that name, because first off, it's a dude. It was one of my friends that gave me that name. Like literally, name was somebody that like used to be like a fuck buddy of mine. Wow, like, wow, wow, and wow. Literally, like, he was like, like we were just talking one day, and he was like, bro, like you should like give yourself like a name. Like what's your like your poetry name gonna be? Because I started posting in like 2018, and this was probably like 2019. Like I had been posting for a little bit. But I wasn't really, like, taking it serious. Like, I was just like, cool, like, I'm putting my poetry out here. It's cool. Right, right. And he was like, nah, bro, like, come up with a name. Like, so we was just texting about it, like, a day later. And he was like, the Pierce Poet, bro, that shit would be fine. So somebody came up with that name for yes, you? Yes, he was like, the Pierce Poet would be fine. And at first I was like, that's so dumb. Like, that's so stupid. I thought about it, like, that whole night. I was like, that shit sound kind of smooth. Yeah, that shit dope. Like, that shit dope. I was like, it sound kind of smooth. And then I literally made that decision, like, a couple days later, I put it on my Instagram, and, like, the next video I posted, I was like, it's the Pierce Poet. And then after that, people, if I, like, if you couldn't see my nipple rings, like, in a video, like, niggas was somebody mad. would message me and be like, yeah, I, don't niggas the, was mad. I don't see the piercings. And it would kind of piss me off, because I was just kind of like, bro, it's not about the piercings, though. Like, right. it's about the poetry. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I was like, it's in my name. Like, it's a part of the brand. Like, I understand right, right. why they're doing that. So, I mean, I just do it. But I also, I'm for, like, women empowerment in the sense of, like, I love my body. Like, I'm not, like, ashamed to show my body. Like, right, right. And I feel like I'm confident enough, like, and I, I'm, I try to be as mindful as possible of, like, showing it, but, like, not doing 
over the top. The like, most. You know, just doing and, the most. And, I, and like, I got that when we were doing a collab that night. Yeah. And we were just trying to really figure out the best way to keep you, right. you know what I'm saying, dressed if we could. Yeah. And, you know, Kim was an awesome assistant yes. that night. You know what I'm saying? She yes. was trying to figure out ways, too, that you could keep on whatever you could keep on. Right. But then that's when I knew that you were about the content and you're about doing whatever needs to be done to get something done that yeah. you want to get done. And yeah. he was like, hey, if I need to take them off, I'll take them off. It wasn't yeah. an issue. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, because... I don't. When I'm working with folks, bro, my, my my thing is to never make you feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, yeah. Like I don't like if Kim's here to help me. Like I'm finna use Kim to help me. Oh you know gosh, what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm gonna move out the way if you need to do something, and then she gets you positioned, or right. she can touch you. I don't have to touch you. Right, she can right. oil you. Like whatever the case may be. Like it's the difference on if you want me to do it yeah. versus if you don't want me to yeah, do it. Yeah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't like touching oil and then touching my damn camera anyway. Yeah. But since you brought up Pierce Poet, and you talked about poetry. The crazy thing is I've been a writer, you know what I'm saying, for really? my entire life. Like, I didn't know that. So my mom was, my mom wrote a lot. My yeah. mom wrote a lot, and that was the way that she expressed herself when she was going through. Yeah. So uh, she kind of sort of passed that on to me through jeans, and I didn't mm. really know how to tap into it. I tapped into it in the fifth grade when yeah. I started liking girls. Right. And I would write poetry to them oh, because that was the way that I expressed myself. That's cute. All right. So also the the dude in the in the in the in, in the booth that's mm -hmm. my best friend. He also knows about me writing. That's that's it. just something that I I done when I was in school. You yeah. know what I'm saying. So this is like a random book that I have that I broke like a crazy like all of my wow, work. Like this. yeah, this is just all different writings. You and, have so much. Yeah, stuff. it's a lot of stuff I wrote when I was at work when I was going through a it lot is of. Handwritten. It's like it's I like a that. lot of a, a lot of different like emotions. That's why I, if I ever yeah. publish this, the name of the book will be Mixed Feelings. I love Because it's just a whole lot of mixed emotions of how yeah. I felt when I was going through. Uh, poetry is like music to me. Like if you it go is. through my, if I, I don't have my Spotify music list yeah. public, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I shared it with two of my frat brothers. Mm. But if you go, I could tell you the story, the emotional roller coaster I was on from beginning of my, yep. of my playlist all the way through it because I added that song for a specific yeah. reason. Either yeah. it made me feel a certain way or it got me over some. Yep. So the thing about my poetry is since I've been paying attention to you and how you deliver your poetry, you yeah. deliver your poetry to like any other person that would deliver it when they're inside like a poetry studio yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I never mastered that part of it. I was just a master of writing it mm -hmm. and I'll read it to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because a lot of people won't read it like I wrote it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so, particular. So yeah. we're going to change gears and I know you kind of sort of like music a little bit. So I tried to get this phone right and I'm not even going to act like I can find the perfect song on this but shout out to epidemic sound again this video is not sponsored by them but i can use my royalty free music okay music okay through them you know what i'm saying to kind of sort of set a little vibe off of this thing you know what i'm saying so uh i'm gonna go through a couple of these and then you let me know when to stop and then well, we're gonna go ahead and, and let you what kind of like vibe you want bro I don't know, man. I write man. about everything, so it's like you want like we on some sexy, like we on some like. Don't do sexy, break. bro. You sitting right like across from me, and I'm blood. sipping on my black cup. You know what I'm saying? You can't do. You can't do a sexy. Like, why, why would man? Why would a man turn down sexy with, with with the Pierce poet sitting <laughs> across from him? Like, let's be real about it now. Like, we ain't, we ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna do that. I want to do my favorite one then, but you know what? We don't even need no music. Man. All right, we can go and kill that then. Let's so, do that. it's a piece. People love this piece, bro. I performed this. For the first time, I performed it in Huntsville. The crazy thing is, like, just to give you a little backstory, if you go on my Instagram, you'll be able to find it. So, follow me again. It's Ty Pruitt, T-A-I underscore P-R-U-I-T-T. -T. But um, it was my first, like, major live performance that I had, right. like, over 100 people at, like, type deal. Right. Um, so I was so nervous, and it was funny because it was a piece that I knew I wanted to do, but I like memorized it on the drive there. Like really memorized it, hey, bro. I don't on the none drive of this. there, but that's because you know usually in my videos, like I more than likely I would have just written a piece and just like wrote it. It was like boom, I fix it up. I'll put my camera up and I'll just record it and put it on Instagram. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So like it's usually like content is quick. 
Um, so when I performed, like, I was trying to get better at because I'm still kind of fairly new to it, too. Like, right. just performing and getting, like, used to that. You got it, though. I'm um, telling you, like, all this stuff I done wrote, I hey, cannot deliver it the way you deliver but it. But I, like, I did public speaking and stuff in high school. So, like, I was used to being in front of people and, like, speaking. I know how to, like, you know, change my tones and, like, adjust my voice to how I need it to be. But I feel you when you say, like, you really, you can only read your poetry how you want it to be read. Like, Correct. You can, like, because if anybody else was to read this piece, even the piece that I'm doing right now, like, they, bro. They, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it justice, like. Right before you read this, do you know what my favorite piece of poetry and delivery is? What? Love Jones. Really? Yeah, when it. my boy got in there talking about being the funk in the left and I'm trying to be the blues in your right. Like, literally, like. I love that. Man, I watch that movie every other night while I'm going to sleep. You like, like, like feelings and see, you deep. Like, I mean, I, like, but see that, and and with everything that we talked about, bro, like, it's some women that really look at me and me and Kim brought in somebody to work with uh, a little while ago for yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah, and she is one of them cute people that you know I met, and yeah. and we were we were cool, right. But she liked guys that are rough around the edge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't live that lifestyle, street yeah. lifestyle, street lifestyle, but I understood early on that it wasn't for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not that I don't know about it or understand it. I just know me. Yeah. And she was like the first girl, like, she said it in a, in, in a like, friendly, like, yeah. funny sense. But she really called me a square. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... I think what makes me a square is because if I do decide to let you in, I am in I am in touch with my feelings. I don't think that makes you a square. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do know how to express myself when you create an environment where I can openly express myself. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what a lot of women lose out on. It's yeah. understanding that in order for a man to be open and express himself like that, you have to give him that you, space. Ha you have to give him the opportunity to you do, do that. You know what I'm saying? And that's not fucking asking him to do it and be this all the time. That yeah. just makes him rebel. You right. know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, eh, anyway, go ahead. What you saying? Also, okay. I'm going to go ahead and spit this piece. Let's go. This is my favorite. Y'all, y'all going to love this piece. I love this piece. It's called Late Night. Um, so yeah, it's how long for you bro. spit that? How long for you spit that? Because I'm turning these pages he, and I'm just trying to find something to read, bro. Yeah, like, bro, like, he has some laminated, <laughs> y'all. Like, he got them ready. Like, like, it's a lot of stuff in here, bro. You're so prepared, like, you're more prepared than me. I'm gonna I'm a read this one. I wrote this when I was in, when I was in the military. So, I go, no, 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 no. You know what? I'll read mine first yeah. just so you can come back and clean up all the mess that I'm chill gonna out, make. Chill you chill know what I'm saying? Be because my good. shit gonna be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Let's go. The Matter of fact, look, I, I created this citation called DTSS. Okay. And okay. it stands for Dedicated to Someone Special. And you can see I scribbled it out. Oh, <laughs> like, it's like, okay. I didn't it's even okay. I didn't even want like it, it to even go like that. He so don't even need a document. I wrote this back <laughs> in. It was probably in, you know, I'm telling my true age when I say this. Yeah. But I was in the United States Marine Corps from 2002 to 2006. And I was stationed in Camp Pendleton, California. Wow. So this was around the time that I wrote this. And it's actually not the original title okay. that I came up with. It was just actually one of the guys that I was cool with yeah. that used to, he, he read a lot. Right. And I would let him, like, proofread my stuff, make yeah, sure yeah, it made yeah, sense. Yeah, and yeah. then he recommended this title. So it's called Our Utopia. Okay. So it says, I'm, I'm ready to offer you that fire and desire, an unbelievable romance that can't be defined, an engagement of one thing that you want in life most. Can I put forth an effort and be ready for whatever is to br be brought forth? expecting nothing but the worth mm -hmm. a man a companion a friend at the most to comfort you at your times when you really hurt the most but not just in pain but every step of the way seeing what you want in your future try my best to help you in every way the bad and the good letting you distinguish between the two but when it boils down to it i'm promising you nothing but all good able to consult to me about anything on your mind whether it be you finding something new or just expressing to me your feelings on the inside mm -hmm. A treasure that's beneath just something that promises to keep it real. I'm telling you I'm something to keep until the end. An arm for an arm and a tooth for a tooth. Both of us wanted the same thing out of a relationship, causing it to be more than just real, but something like fiction. Something that's possibly, something that just possibly can't be true. But I promise a wager has been set. A strong possibility above all the rest. A drool over a stone and the sun over the moon. A man so unbelievable to you, your head just keeps spinning as if you just got off a stool. And from that off into another world begins a new journey for the two. 
But in that world, only you and I exist. Me seeing things your way and me seeing truly how you feel. Without pain, without hurt, worry free. No games involved. Just a feeling on the inside of you that I cause when you see me. That's all. Sending chills from your head to your toe, making you feel as if you're free. Floating in the world, floating in your own world because you have no worries. Just a man that wants the same thing that you want. For someone to love them and show them the same affection back. Like when a racist said, not for you to finish before me or me to finish before you, Mm -hmm. but for us to finish together. Mm -hmm. Celebrating afterwards because of the feeling that exists within the two. But these are just feelings that I feel I should tell you in my dream, my paradox, when I see only you. Wow. You talking about clean up the mess. Are you serious? Yeah, clean up the mess, man. That is not. Are you serious? <laughs> Can y'all snap for him? Can y'all snap for him? Why are you trying to play yourself like, like that? Like, like, I mean, it's just. Ah, oh, oh, shit. Come through in the engineer room. Y'all acting up in there. I don't know why you just tried to act like you're not a real like, poet. Man. Like, I, I mean, again, I've been writing since I didn't feel great, but nobody knows about that stuff. But it's like, um, why not? Like you, you don't share it now. So you are, it. Well, with that, <laughs> with that has been shared. But like you know, I got so much stuff on my plate. I'm just trying to get in motion right now. Man, like I'm finna drag you to a poetry event. Bro. <laughs> you like, crazy? I'm poetry, not. Bro. I I had to work on my delivery. I Literally, help you with that. I had to I had to work on my delivery. I hope you with that. But we, it's not about me. It's about the Pierce poet tonight. All right. It's about your beauty, your insight, what you can deliver, what you can give us. You've been an awesome guest so far. So definitely give us something. Bro. All right, y'all ready? We ready. All I need you to do is I just need a tap on the table for me. You ready? You gonna keep that? Got gotcha. you. All right. Let's go. Mm. It's a late night. It's our date night. It's our baby. Let me be your escape night. See, I'm just trying to undress you, and I'm not talking about your clothes, but your mental, boo. Let me stimulate your mind. Let's take a journey through time. And you tell me about your life and maybe what makes you cry or what makes you laugh. What puts you in the mood? What do you think about daily? Tell me what you watch on YouTube. See, I just want to see what makes you you and what books do you read. Or what podcast do you listen to? Let me dissect your dialect, baby. Tell me where you're from. Let me unfold these pages that you've left undone. I see your stature and it's crazy and your waves are looking real wavy. And trust me when I say you so fine, I wouldn't mind having your babies. But that's not why I'm here, at least not just yet. See, I need way more than your physical to make me wet. So let's have mind sex. Yeah, let's dissect in our thoughts. Let's brainstorm together. Think of some shit we never would have thought. Let's put our heads together and make some money moves. Because there's nothing like intellectual conversation to put you in the mood. I just want the whole thing. Forget just the tip. See, the deeper we enter. <laughs> it's the way you get into it. <laughs> See, the deeper we penetrate this conversation. It's like my stomach is doing flips. Well, ain't that some shit. See, you locked me in. And with nothing more than just your vibes, baby, your spirit is a 10. So let me see how you stroke. Find your rhythm now, show and tell. Show me how deep you can get and trance me with your words like a spell. I just want you to dig into me with everything that you got. Because this late night conversation has got me feeling kind of hot. And as we get to know each other, and I watch how you move, strip me of everything you want to know because I'm opening up for you. I've got all night, baby. So let's take our time. And enjoy every single second intertwined in each other's minds. Uh, uh, <laughs> they call it a Pierce poet, hey. ladies and gentlemen. I know you wish you was here seeing where I was sitting, so you got like this first point of view. But because look, man, the Pierce poet got the Pierce is popping. Hey. And not only this, she got the pierces popping. She got the words and the intellect and okay. everything else popping, man. That was dope, bro. I love Thank it. Thank you. I love Thank it. I love you. it. I love it. I love it. And that was sexy. What you mean? Thank you. I that was that was that was actually sexy, man. So you know, b- before we get ready to wrap this thing up, man, and, and call it to an end, man. Um, I just want to like figure out like what's like. What's your drive? What are you trying to do, like, in 2022? Like, mm. for the for the rest of the year, when it comes to your poetry, when it comes to, I, like, I heard you sing for the first time the other day on Instagram Live, yeah. and I was like, 
your voice was definitely different. Like yeah. I wasn't looking for a Beyonce or Jennifer Hudson or yeah, something yeah, like. Yeah. It was like it gave like, like I I even commented and I was like the raspiness is what I yeah. love. Like it created you had your your own your own voice. You don't sound like anybody else. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with all that being said, like what's your vision and what's your mood board look like mm -hmm. for 2022? Like what are some things that you just want to make sure you accomplish for yourself? Um. Wow, that's such a good question. First and foremost, um, I really been like archiving poetry lately. Like I've been archiving, 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 because like one of the biggest things I want to do this year is like kind of expand my content in the sense of like actually giving these poet these poems real visuals, right? Um, and not just like sitting in front of a phone camera and reciting them. I really want to start kind of like branding that more, um, and kind of just bringing it full circle. Um, I also I got to get back on I got to get back on the stage. Um, gotcha. that's something that I've just been neglecting because of work. I've just been working too much, but, um, I'm getting back on the stage. Um, I really plan on like expanding more. I'm trying to do more shows like in Atlanta and just like a little more beyond like outside of Alabama trying mm -hmm. to get like my face out there a little more. Right. Um, but I also, um, I'm doing it this year. I put my foot down and a actual poetry EP is going to be dropped by this year. I was just about to ask you yeah, about that. Yeah. An actual poetry EP. Like I already got my producer. Like he's so freaking talented. He's in the A. I'm actually like considering just going ahead and moving out there. Like possibly by the time my lease ends by this summer. Like mm. I'm thinking about just going out, going out there, bro. Like hey, but I just got to get, I got to get right. Hey, y'all listen to him. Everybody listen to him. <sighs> Don't do it. Bruh. Listen, I have a lot of clientele in Atlanta that I take pictures and we do video work with. And you know what? I'm so cool with commuting. It's, like, it's yeah. literally the people that live in Atlanta it's are crazy. literally saying, mm -hmm. telling people Don't they're go. making videos and everything. Like, please stop moving to Atlanta. So like, there. we're overpopulated. Like, yeah, I mean, it's definitely the land of creating and, and, and opportunities for, for black folks. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. But talking about moving up there, man, do you know that like 90% of the people that are homeless in Atlanta oh, yeah. moved to Atlanta because they had a dream of come, becoming something yeah. or doing something. That's how they ended up. Yeah. And then I also found out like a lot of people are homeless because of their pride. Yeah. Okay. Like it's, it's just because of the fact like when they when they lose their home and they, and they go somewhere, yeah. it's like I'm not going to tell my family or my friends about yeah. it, yeah. you know. I'll be on my feet next week. I'll make something happen next week. And then next week turns into two weeks. Two yeah. weeks turns into now four weeks. And before, trap, now bro. you're stuck on, like, that. I, I, find, I read, it was a documentary or some or article or something I read, and they said that's how people become homeless yeah. because they won't ask for help. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and, and it just ends up eventually what, supposed to be in a week or two weeks yeah. of getting on their feet turns into a lifestyle now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not saying that that's going to be you. Yeah. I, I definitely think that you're in, in, uh, in an intelligent enough woman that if that's the direction that you want to move with your career mm -hmm. and, and you'll probably have more possibilities and more avenues there. But I know some artists that I used to manage that moved up there. Yeah. And it's been the same. Same thing. I'm just the cost there. of living went up. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> I mean, this is it. it's like, uh, it's me and my, it's it's a really good, actually, when the girl that be in my TikToks, um, she's a poet too. She's a. The skinny, dark skin girl? Yes. Okay. Poet and, bro, her vocals are insane. Bro. Really? Her vocals, you like my voice, but like her vocals are like insane, bro. Like it don't make no sense. Wow. Um, But we kind of like just been pondering doing it together because like we on the same wave. Like we trying to kind of accomplish the same thing. Gotcha. Um, it's not even, you know what I'm saying? I've been pondering it. We'll see. It's not set in stone. It's something that I consider because it's just the, really the convenience of just being there because everything in regards to like producer and like studio and like accessibility is, mm -hmm. is, is right there. Like I already have like everything I need. Mm -hmm. It's just in Atlanta. And just that's to, just like, yeah. So, 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 so this is what you have to realize. Uh, and I, and I want to drop this in your spirit mm -hmm. when it comes to content, Content is content. It don't yeah. matter if it's created in Africa, Russia, <laughs> China. It, yeah. it don't matter. Like, I just watched a video of a guy repairing a tire mm. in, like, somewhere over in Iraq or something like yeah. that. And it went viral. Yeah. Because he was fixing a tire. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So once you get a gist of what I was talking about when that mood board or right. your short-term and long-term goals mm -hmm. for what you want to see happen... Mm -hmm. Don't ever think that you have to be in an unnecessary place to make that happen. I feel it, yeah. Because you can literally come in here yeah. and record 
your EP. That's true. <laughs> and and be okay. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just about once you get that recorded, who you distributing it to. True. What connections and what next are you trying to make? Now that you got this part of it done, true. who are you going to to kick it and chill with and rub shoulders right. with when you go to Atlanta. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm not trying to derail you from going to Atlanta yeah, 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 because yeah. six months ago, when my well, almost a year ago, when my relationship ended, the first place I was trying to move to was Atlanta. Yeah. Was simply because that's where at the time all my business was. All yeah. the models that I was working with, yeah. all the OnlyFans models, like yeah. it's motherfuckers want to play. But it's so much money in OnlyFans. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like the OnlyFans models and the models that I was working with that was really making some noise. The photographers that I was working with that was introducing me to these women that was on these different platforms yeah. that were yeah. doing it. Yeah. They were all in Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But then once I started getting in that world, mm -hmm. I started meeting a shitload of people in yeah. Birmingham that do the same thing. And yeah. guess what? They're getting the same paper that the people in yeah. Atlanta live yeah. getting. Yeah. yeah. They That's just, true. the only difference is they in Atlanta and, and we're in Birmingham. Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. the only thing. So definitely, I know that I don't have to tell you to do what's best for you. Yeah, yeah, Again, yeah. man, thanks so much, man, for coming on the platform. We appreciate you, man. Um, yeah. We've had a, a great time. Well, hopefully we can get you back at some point in oh, time. Okay. I think uh, I probably, when I get the uh, camera in here and get it set up uh, with a TV screen, so yeah. when I reference certain things, I can, like, point yeah. to the screen so you mm. can actually see what we're talking about because yeah. I can drop that visual on our YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah. We'll come back, and we'll probably bring you back when we actually drop your pictures or something like that. And then that way we could probably just do a what's new segment yeah. So, because Kim only does the West New segments and yeah. the industry money segments. She don't do the after hour segments. Right, but right. we appreciate you coming and dropping Thank the jewels you. that you've dropped, man. Thank it's you. been awesome, man. One more time before we get up out of here, please tell the people how they can find you. All right, bro. My name is Ty. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, literally all my social medias. TikTok is the same username. T-A-I underscore P R U I T T. That is T A I underscore P R U I T T. Please follow me. I'm really like a lot of fun. Like you will not regret it. So like just come on over and join the game. Like hey, look, bit. look, look, listen. Hey, 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 put the camera on me real quick. Hey, the camera on me. Hey, put it on my camera. Hey, listen, y'all. If you like them uh them prints and things, yeah. <laughs> Go go go, 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 go tap into that TikTok, okay? Cause that's that what you're gonna see, folks. <laughs> You gonna see, and you gonna see them up here and down there. <laughs> and she just like all the other TikTok girls. They wear them little bitty shorts and stuff. They be real revealing. You gonna see them when she's skating. You gonna see them when she doing the TikToks. <laughs> you, gonna see, you, gonna, you gonna see. You gonna see. Hey, look. If that's what you wanna see. <laughs> Make sure you go see it. Hey, man, but thanks so much, man, for tuning in, man. This is a wrap on the After Hours session Peace. of the What You Mean podcast, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in, man. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you for downloading, listening, whatever you're doing, man. And until next time, man, we'll check y'all later, man. Peace. Peace.